Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves. This is part two of a brand new Let's Play series playing as the Russian Empire. Uh, the Tsarist forces are under my command, and we are one year into the game. We're into 1901. We haven't built any new classes of ships. We've largely just been allowing our existing designs to be built, um, which were already under construction. I didn't legacy build the old fleet, so the fleet that we're working with here is uh, just sort of a stock fleet. In today's episode, I'm going to be designing my first vessels for the Russian Navy uh, that I'm going to be putting my own touch on. Uh, and I figured I'd go ahead and talk about this because this was taken from a live stream from a couple of days ago, but I did want to go ahead and kind of talk through my design philosophy here, which I didn't really do a good job of, in my opinion, in the live stream, so we'll talk about it here. Uh, what you can see here is I'm scoping out the caliber of guns at this point. So I'm going to be designing a battleship for my first vessel. And ideally you want battleships to have, you know, 11 or 12 inch guns or 13 inch guns at this stage in the game in, in the early 1900s. The standard battleship armor for the British Empire at this point in time was 12 inches. The standard armament for the German Empire at this point was 11 inches. Typically, 11 or 12 inches was the standard gun armament. Now, the reason I was looking at those gun calibers was because the Russian Empire is a little bit behind in naval gun technology. So while the standard is a quality of zero for a gun, it's not exceptional, that's just sort of par for the course, if you will, the Russian Empire only has negative one quality, which means the gun itself is not as advanced, doesn't have as good a range, doesn't penetrate as much armor, it's just an inferior 12-inch gun all around. The 12, 11, and 10-inch guns for the Russian Empire are all the same. The Russians also... Uh, suffer from slow ship building times. So whatever I'm going to build now will likely be obsolete by the time it comes out on the ways. Frankly, that's just the reality for this era in naval in naval construction, but especially in, in the early 1900s and especially for the Russians. Now my design philosophy that you can see me kind of working through here, there's a couple of things that I really want to keep in mind. One, I really want to have a fast battleship. 20, 20 knots to me is a good speed for a battleship of this era. The German pre... or the German pre dreadnought battleship class, which I really enjoy kind of comparing things to the Deutschland class, which actually survived and fought in the Battle of Jutland, only made about 18 and a half knots. The uh, British battleships of this era, the Edward VII class, which comes a, a couple of years later, only made about 18 knots. The Russian pre dreadnought battleships also only made around 18 knots. The Bor Borodino class, uh, which were sort of famous for their actions during the Russo Japanese War, they only made about 18 knots. The Andrei Preznovsky class, uh, which comes a little bit later in the early 1900s, also only makes about 18 and a half knots. But what you're going to see me doing here in this design is really struggling on how to keep the speed up. Because one of the biggest things that's going to make these vessels obsolete very quickly is an inferior uh, speed. So there's a couple of things that are really important, in my opinion, for this era of ship. One is the heavy guns. You need to have a substantial secondary battery, and you need to have a substantial primary battery. We're getting into the later periods of pre-dreadnought designs by the time this game takes place, where the secondary batteries start becoming heavier and heavier. Initially, the secondary batteries were really designed to deal with in-close enemy torpedo boats that were coming in to launch attacks on the battleship. That's what the secondary guns were for. The main guns were to hit the enemy. And the secondary guns uh, sort of evolved over time to becoming heavier and heavier, almost quasi-main battery guns uh, toward the end of the pre-dreadnought ships, uh, with the idea being that a lot of the engagements would take place at close range, where these more rapid-firing guns would have an impact on the outcome of the battle. The problem was if they were going to be doing that in a line of battle uh, scenario, they needed to be heavy enough to cause substantial damage. Maybe not penetrate the main belt, but do substantial damage to the, sort of the superstructure of the ship. And so the guns kept getting heavier and heavier, and you started seeing seven, eight, nine inch guns in several of these secondary uh, turrets. So what you see here in my design is a substantial commitment to eight inch guns of uh, a secondary uh, battery, uh, all in turrets. So uh, you can put them in casemates and save a little bit of 
weight, if you will, uh, by putting them in casemates and thus uh, not having to worry about if the sea is up. If you're if you're sailing in heavy seas, you can't use your casemates. Think of them basically like uh, gun ports on a age of sail vessel. If you have a lower gun port on sort of a, a two or three decker vessel and the sea is running really high, if you open those ports, the water can get in and flood the vessel. So you don't, you know, you don't want to do that and obviously in a heavy sea you can't do that well again in a heavy sea you can't use your casemates because they're closer to the water line but a turreted secondary battery is usable in all conditions so that's really important to me the second piece is these are heavy guns so they're going to play an important role in any close in action and also if you remember our 12 inch guns have a negative one quality so i'm kind of relying on my secondary battery of heavy eight inch guns to really make this battleship a little bit more fearsome uh, the speed is really important, as I've already mentioned, so you can see how at this point I've lowered the speed down to 19 knots. In my opinion, that's one of the most important things in keeping a battleship relevant, because as turbines become developed and as vessels gain more and more speed, one of the first things that's going to happen is your line of battleship is, isn't going to be able to keep up with your dreadnought-class ships. So as turbines come about, as the battleships get bigger and bigger, as the main uh, battery all becomes sort of one uniform caliber and the standard dreadnought not gets designed, one of the biggest changes is you start seeing faster battleships. The German Nassau class, their first uh, battleship, uh, Dreadnought battleship class, made about 20.2 knots at max speed, and that was slow for a Dreadnought. So in my view, keeping that battleship fast is going to be important because yes, it's going to become obsolete with it, with its guns not being up to par, but it's also going to be obsolete because it won't be able to keep up with the main line of battle. If it can keep up with the main line of battle, then it can still use its weight of metal to aid the fight, even if it doesn't have the same amount of metal that it's flinging about, uh, it at least will be able to uh, kind of keep up the the appearances of being a uh, useful uh, vessel in, in, a, in a battle. But if it's too slow and it gets left behind, uh, then, then it's not worth much. And frankly, a lot of these, as you'll see a little bit later in this Let's Play, a lot of these battles tend to be kind of running actions where the enemy will notice you're too big for them and they'll turn away and run away, or where you notice that you're out and you need to turn and run. And so speed is critical. If you've got a battleship that can't keep up with the enemy as they're running away, it's not worth much. And that's why you see me focusing so much on speed. The other piece is armor. Um, I don't have a good hard fast rule for how much armor the ship should have, uh, but I like to have my main belt be at least equal to the uh, caliber shell that it's flinging. Now I know a lot of people want even heavier armor, but one of the big things that you'll notice from my other vessels in the fleet right now is they're all very lightly armored. They're like 8 or 9 inch belts. That's why you see me going heavy here. Um, a 12 inch main belt of armor is really important and frankly I think if I can be fast and if I can have a strong armored belt then even though the fact that my main guns are a little bit inferior that I don't fling as much metal if I can withstand the enemy attacks and I can keep up with the enemy then even having a smaller uh, ship uh, in terms of its actual firepower is negated somewhat. So you can compensate for inferior firepower by superior armor and superior uh, speed, which is what I'm really focusing on, sort of the 20 knots, the heavy armor on the conning tower, which is where your bridge is, which is what you need to do to keep you know everybody happy and healthy during the fight and then also uh, the speed to be able to keep up with the action. You can see I've shrunk the secondary guns a little bit, down to eight guns, four per broadside. That allows me to have a decent tertiary battery, so if enemy you know, torpedo boats do come in close, we'll have 16 three-inch guns that can really pepper them uh, and, and kind of fend them off, or at least that's my, my theory. And that's kind of where you see me come out with this uh, class of battleship. We're going to call it the THG class uh, once we finish it up, uh, but that's that's where we come in. Four 12-inch guns of a lower quality, eight 8-inch eight guns of a better quality, all in single turrets, so one hit only takes out one gun. They're not in dual turrets or anything like that. 23-inch uh, tertiary guns, 20 knots of speed, 18,000 tons, the largest our docks can build, a 12-inch main belt of armor, 3-inch deck armor, and 12 and a half inches on the turrets to keep them safe from enemy fire. And that's about where we're gonna where we're gonna end up with this ship here. You can see we've got a little bit of weight remaining. Uh, I think this is a pretty solid design for my first ship. The one thing that I am gonna notice is this dang thing is super expensive. It's gonna be almost double uh, the monthly build cost 
um, well, not double, but it's over $10 million more total than our next most expensive battleship. And the Russian shipyards are slow. They take a long time to turn these things out. So when all said and done, we're going to see that it's going to take us about three years before uh, these vessels are going to come online. And that's assuming we even have the funds to build them all. I did shrink the range down to medium. Originally, I had thought maybe it would be a long-range ship so we could use it in the Far East. My intent is still eventually to send it to the Far East to deal with the Japanese. But for now, uh, that's what we're going to... That's what the ship is going to be. Now, this all was taken from a live stream from a couple of days ago, which I did on Twitch. I'm doing my live streams over on Twitch. There's actually quite a bit of sort of back and forth and interaction with people. I had a pretty decent sized audience, around 15 to 20 people on Twitch, watching me live stream uh, Rule the Waves, which um, when I stream on YouTube, I generally get more than that. But on Twitch, that's pretty impressive for a game of that sort. The audio from this series largely was taken from that live stream, although this little bit here, me talking through this, uh, I thought I could have done a better job job, so I kind of went back and redesigned the ship, or, or, or talked about my designing of the ship here over the actual live stream audio. But I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of merge back in with the live stream, so what you're going to hear from, not, from here on out for the rest of this video is the actual live commentary of this uh, video and of, of this series. Obviously, let me know your thoughts below, and I will meet you guys back up at the end. Ships uh, all being built. Uh, we also have some other vessels that are going to come off the ways soon, uh, which will free up a little bit of money to help uh, our budgetary situation a bit. But I'm going to need to lay down some new destroyers and cruisers and all of that before too long as well. That being said, those are all laid down. So I think that does it for our turn in February of 1901. Let's move ahead to March. Several vessels completed. Torpedo breakthrough. Okay. So improves the quality of our torpedoes. Doesn't really require us to build a new vessel though. Um, you can see here those vessels completing uh, brings our, our negative ba balance down a bit. If we go to the Almanac you can see we are building six battleships which is actually more than anybody else in the world. Um, long live the uh, Russian Empire. Um, and let's go ahead and kind of continue cruising through. We've got some more cruisers that are being commissioned to the Navy. During maneuvers one of our ships has opened fire on a fishing boat from France. Oh no! Uh, killing several fishermen. How do we react? Uh, the boat was fishing in a restricted area, and they suffer the consequences of the careless actions, plus one prestige, offer full compensation, and make a public apology. Well, this doesn't hurt our prestige, but you can see, or it doesn't hurt our um, tensions, but you can see we lose prestige. And again, you're judged based on your prestige. So it would cause us to drop to 19. Because of that, no way in hell are we apologizing to anyone. I don't want to lose any prestige. Um, new crews and trainings applied. Crews are now deemed proficient in the new tactics. Okay, so all of our crews now have the increase in uh, gunnery. Our relations with Japan have taken a sudden turn for the worse. You can see tensions with Japan just ratcheted up a bit. Um, Japan is commissioning several new battleships. And our budget's getting a little bit more in order under construction here. You can see the one thing I wish you could do is, like, I can accelerate construction, but it'll only... Oh, whoops, I can accelerate construction, but it only increases it by like three months. I don't understand the value of saving three months and spending almost $300,000 more. I feel like you should be able to accelerate construction at a little bit bigger of a clip than what the game allows you to do. And I think what we may do next is design a new heavy cruiser class for specifically for service in the Far East. So we'll go ahead and uh, give us one more turn. A revolution in an African country has left some of our nationals stranded. What do we do? Send a strong naval squadron to bombard them, the capital, until our citizens are released. Uh, that increases our budget. It also increases our prestige. It does increase tensions by two. Join an international squadron sent to contain the violence, increases tension and budget, or resolve it via diplomatic means. It'll lower prestige and lower tension. We are going to send a strong squadron to bombard the capital until our citizens are released. Bam! Tensions rat. Oh, surprisingly, Japan's tensions didn't change at all. Um, we can now build destroyers of up to 600 tons displacement. And our budget is almost balanced now, despite the fact that we're building these four behemoth battleships. The rest of our ships are kind of completing, which allows us to have a lot more money left over. Um, I, despite the new design abilities for, our, uh, for destroyers, I think the next class of ships I'm going to go ahead and design is some heavy cruisers. So let's actually get some point of reference here. Our battleships are around 12,000 tons, 18,000 on the newest one. Our heavy cruisers are 10,300 tons on the upside. So let's go ahead and design a new heavy cruiser class. We'll ask the computer to design it for us. Um, we're going to make it 
I think it's 13,500. It's going to be larger than our smallest battleships. So I think what we'll do is we'll make it be 13,000 tons. We'll see if we can make it 24 knots, be nice and fast. Uh, I want to have sort of 8 inches of belt armor, so I may have to increase the size of this thing. Um, deck armor of 3 inches, just like our battleships. Conning tower armor of 12 inches. Uh, turret armor of 6. Uh, actually, we'll make it... We're going to have 9-inch guns, so we'll make the turret armor 9. Secondaries will cut to 3 inches. <laughs> We're going to have to make this thing gigantic. Um, I'm not going to have 6-inch secondaries. That's just insane. So our main our main turrets are going to be 9-inch guns. That's going to be our, our sort of fore and aft. That'll reduce the amount of weight that we need. We'll have 120 rounds per gun. We'll have 5-inch guns as our secondaries. Uh, because they're going to be 5 inches, I'm not even going to have any tertiary guns. I think 5 inches are a good size. But we're going to put them in turrets, individual turrets. Um, or maybe a double turret. I don't know if that saves that saves us a bit of weight. Um, secondary guns restricted by 40% due to suitable training and elevation gear for secondary turrets. Darn, so we don't have technology yet. Um, we just do a single turret. Still reduces rate of fire. Are they too big? What if we do casemates? Yeah. We can put the secondaries in casemates, which gets rid of some of those penalties. Um, okay, this thing's weight. Maybe 23 knots. Knots? I don't, it's got to make at least 20 knots, right? Uh, 23. 24 knots will really allow it to have a longer life as a cruiser. The problem is its belt armor is going to be way too heavy. So our main guns are 9 inches. Usually I want the belt to be at least 9 inches, but we'll drop this to 7 to save a little bit of weight. Um, turret armor will drop to 7 as well. Man, this is a difficult vessel. It's also got to be long range. Darn. Make it a 14,000 ton vessel. Basically, going to be as expensive as a battleship to build. Maybe it's twenty. Oh my god, man, this thing kind of sucks. About one ten. I'm nowhere near having weight enough weight savings. I'm going to leave the torpedoes because I think there's value in having torpedoes on a uh, on a cruiser. So just kind of tweaking these things here. Drop the deck armor to two and a half. Shouldn't be in the line of battle, so hopefully plunging fire is less of an issue. Belt extended will have be two and a half as well. Um, secondaries, man, eh, they don't need as much armor. They're secondaries. I don't like the idea of having it be this lightly armored. Six inch belt seems so damn light. Um, I guess, I mean, it's only a cruiser, so theoretically it shouldn't be in the line of battle, so, um, but still, really would prefer it to be like nine inches, but there's no way we can do that and keep it reasonable size. Maybe we make it 14,000 tons. Um, drop this to seven, seven and a half, seven inch. Okay, so we'll do that. It's a 14,500 ton heavy cruiser, so substantially smaller than our new class of battleships, but still gigantic. Makes 22 knots, 7-inch uh, belt armor, uh, 4 9-inch guns as its primary, and 5 10-inch guns as its secondary. We can actually increase. Damn it! Oop, still can't do it. Hmm. All right. Well, 10 uh, 5 inch guns as a secondary. This thing is gigantic. Uh, we can at least afford more heavy gun or heavy ammo. So 130 rounds of guns. And we will name it the Czar class. Czar class cruisers. All right, all okay. You want to go build some? Yes, we're going to build two. You can see it's actually as expensive as some of our cheaper battleships. It's going to be almost 1.7 million per turn. And we're going to build two of them. These are going to be our long-range vessels designed to operate in Asia. And you can see they're going to take over two and a half years. Or about two and a half years. 
So there goes our naval budget as we move into the middle of 2000 or 1901. Uh, our budget comes back a little bit as we finish one of our heavy cruisers, uh, but tensions with Japan are still higher than they are anywhere else. The Tsar expresses his concern that our forces in Northeast Asia are insufficient considering the threat from Japan. Okay. Um, well, we can always send more vessels to Japan. Um, so why don't we do that? Uh, we've got a couple of uh, vessels, some of these resin class battleships in Northeast Asia. Let's go ahead and send the other two. Go ahead and move these ships. So two more battleships of the resin class. And then we'll go ahead and send these. This one's a brand new one. Uh, but we'll go ahead and send two of the Lenic class uh, cruisers. Uh, or heavy cruisers, sorry. And then two of the two more of these light cruisers. And some of these. So we'll send two battleships, two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and four destroyers. Uh, oh, I got to select an area to move them to the Northeast Asian Station. Hopefully that uh, makes our, our uh, emperor a little bit more pleased as it brings us closer to parity with Japan, although they've completed their battleships, so actually we'll still be quite a bit behind. We'll have about four battleships in theater to the Japanese seven. We'll have about four heavy cruisers in theater to the Japanese nine, so yeah, we will be heavily outclassed in that theater. Uh, but it is what it is for now. Um, commissioned to the Navy during trials, it's found that the ship is somewhat overweight. Just great. Uh, one of our major shipyards is on short is short on orders and is offering to build another unit of the Czar class in 26 months at a 10% discount on the total price. Yeah, we can't really afford it, but I'd be happy to uh, have another vessel of the class. There's been an, inter an uprising in an African country, the focus of a great power colonial ambitions. We must send a force to evacuate our nationals and protect our interests. What size expedition should the vessel uh, be? A cruiser, increased prestige, double tensions. A battleship, increased prestige, increased budget, increased tensions. Or a gunboat, increased tensions. Well, this is going to ratchet things up, but it'll increase our prestige by two, so we'll do that. And everybody's pissed off. The interesting thing is anytime I do anything in Africa, no one cares. Japan doesn't care. It's just the rest of Europe that cares. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Nonetheless, you can see tensions are really increasing, but we did get more budget. We also have our prestiges up to 23, which is at the end of the day how we're judged. So, yay. Uh, the battleship here should be completing, which will ease some of our budgetary concerns. Um, let's go ahead. And Oleg is finished working up. All right, the Northampton class battleship for the U.S. Cockburn safety valve. And they're currently baffled by the problems of the double bottom. Um, all right, so we made a research breakthrough on submarines, even though I don't think we're actually researching submarines. I don't think we've got a low-priority item, but nonetheless, we are, we're making progress there, I suppose. Um, and there you go. Our budget is still in bad shape. We're not going to be able to afford all these ships at current budgetary priorities, uh, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and get these vessels to... Yeah. Okay, counterintelligence believes Japan has stolen technology of AP projectiles from us. The affair has leaked to the press, and the conservative newspapers are clamoring for action. What should we do? We shouldn't get upset over a little bit of spying. That hurts our prestige. We should send a diplomatic note of the strongest possible language. There you go. Tensions with Japan are increasing on par with Austria and Germany. Um, but um, our fleet has arrived in Asia. So uh, crew quality is good, 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 fair, good across the board. Uh, these vessels, I think, just transited to Northeast Asia. They're a little bit damaged, but I believe uh, our station should be able to repair them. You can see here we now have 134,000 tons in Asia. We've got four battleships there. We've got four, actually, oh, wow, okay. I didn't realize we had six heavy cruisers out there, uh, some light cruisers and some destroyers. Um, okay, so we're increasing the size of our fleet overseas. Uh, we're continuing our construction, but I don't really have enough. So the Tsar has made a foreign policy gaffe. You're asked to smooth things over by the naval secretary. I would never presume to undercut the authority of the Tsar. That'll increase tensions, but will give me better prestige. Agree to make a bland statement. That'll hurt our prestige. Divert attention by making a statement criticizing the adventurous foreign policy of who? Japan would almost assure a war. France, whatever, that would also almost assure war, Great Britain or Germany. Doing that would, what would that do? It would increase budget and double tension. It doesn't increase prestige. So I'm just going to do this. I want the prestige 
And interestingly enough, tension increases by several ships, but not, uh, or by several nations. But for whatever reason, a lot of these random actions don't affect our relationship with Japan, which is kind of interesting. Unrest level is one. I assume that is just kind of standard. It can increase if your naval budget is too high for too long. Um, I should be increasing dock size, but I just don't have the money to do that right now. We've got about 10 months more of money at current budgetary. <laughs> you can see none of our ships are going to be done in 10 months. So we're building three of the Tsar class heavy cruisers and four of these THG class battleships. All of those vessels are bound for the Far East whenever they're completed, um, but they're still a ways away from being ready. The new naval secretary has read a book on naval strategy, extolling cruiser warfare. He wants you to build at least 10 additional cruisers. Oh boy. I will not let the Navy micromanage this way. It'll hurt our prestige, decrease our budget. Well, we do not really need that many cruisers, but we could build half that number. Or of course, sir, which will increase my budget. It will increase my prestige. And how the hell am I going to build 10 cruisers? God, I can't even imagine how we're going to build that many. Um... Yikes. Yeah. I don't even know what to do. Well, pluck a couple of battleships out of your ass. I suppose I could halt the construction. Okay, sir. Of course, sir. I want more prestige. I want more budget. Um, at least he did give me increased budget, although that did increase our unrest level. So we must have 13 light cruisers or heavy cruisers built. Wait, 13? Oh, because we already have three being built. Okay. So I think what this means is I need to build a new class of light cruisers. They're going to be light cruisers. They're going to be designed specifically for commerce. Rate. So they're going to be about 5,000 tons. Uh, belt armor is really not important for these things. They're light cruisers, so we'll drop that down a bit. Drop conning tower armor down to five. Uh, we want these things to be fast, so 24 knots is kind of the standard. Uh, we're going to make the main gun caliber... Uh, do we want six? Uh, I'm not going to have that many secondary. Insane. We'll do 14 secondaries and casemates. Um, this will give us, what, eight six-inch guns? In turrets. Um, so they're not in turrets. I suppose we'll make them 5,500 tons. We move 24 knots. Deck armor will be one. So these things are ugh, one and a half. Um, turret armor will be one and a half. And ammo per gun, 130. These are lighter guns. So if we put them at 5-inch guns, make them long-range vessels, but they're light cruisers, so they probably should be. So we'll do 23-knot vessels. It's a little bit slow for a light cruiser, in my opinion, uh, especially with its main goal of commerce rating. They're not going to be good in, in fights with such little armor. Um, we don't have a... We do have a 2-inch belt, a 1... A one-inch deck is going to be more than sufficient, I think. It's a, it's a light cruiser. The deck armor is not that important. It allows us to increase the weight on the turret armor to two. Increase the conning tower to seven. Can we actually increase the speed? No, I'm not. Um, and maybe we've got, you know, 18. We can keep them at six-inch uh, main guns. Uh, I think maybe we add, can we add more torpedoes? Uh, port broadside, harbored broadside. Do that. Armored turrets must also have armored roof. Turret top, one inch. Okay, so we've got decent amount, I guess. Can we increase the belt armor to two and a half. Yes, we can. All right, so two and a half belt, um, with eight main guns. Six inch uh, caliber. They make 23 knots, 5,500 tons displacement, normal accommodations, long range, four torpedo tubes, 18 three inch guns and casemates is the secondary. And we're going to call these guys, uh, I don't know what Russian is for Commerce Raider. Although. 
How much? I need to find 400 tons. The problem is I like design myself. I am like the defense, uh, the defense industry. I over-engineer everything dramatically and then get myself in a situation where I have no money for anything. Um, I like the idea of 24 knots. Maybe we drop the belt armor to 2. Drop the conning ar tower armor back to 6. Um, save a little bit of weight by dropping torpedoes. These 3-inch guns drop 2 per side. Five three-inch guns. Oh, it doesn't do much. I hate the idea of like a six. If it's really a commerce raider, I guess. I guess if it really is a commerce raider, this is kind of what you want. They're a little bit larger, but so are the British ones. So six thousand tons, but I don't know how I'm going to afford ten of these things. Um, it's going to cost a thousand million dollars. A oh god. <laughs> um. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's uh budget buster? No, I don't I don't know what to call these things. What do I call these things? Uh We're going to call these the 1812 class after the invasion of Russia. Go to the build dialog. None of these things. 10 million dollars return. 2 million dollars for initial development. We're going to be bankrupt in one turn. <laughs> well, Dear sir, we're building... How many are we building now? One. All right, everybody, there you have it. A new light cruiser design, a new battleship design, and a new uh, heavy cruiser design, all during this single video. So this kind of became the ship design uh, episode of our Rule the Waves uh, series, which we're now into 1902, so we're two years into the game. Tensions are ratcheting up, and we are meeting our insane uh, sort of... Uh, naval secretary's uh, objective of building 13 cruisers, although it's kind of bankrupting us, so we're going to have to slow down some of these battleships that we started at great cost. With that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign out for this episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this series to this point. Certainly leave your thoughts below, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.